Ready to start, right? All right. So um, today we're going to continue our uh, looking at the Schrodinger's wave equation and its implications for um, solving the um, the three-dimensional geometry of electrons around arrangements around an atom. Uh, when Niels Bohr described the hydrogen atom, his model called for an electron to be locked in an orbital at uh, 53 picometers from the atom, from the nucleus rather, uh, 53 picometers being 10 to the minus 12. One picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters, so 1,000 picometers is equal to one nanometer, and 1,000 femtometers would be equal to one picometer. Uh, Schrodinger's wave equation allowed a more generous region of probability for finding an electron with the area of highest probability found near the Bohr's prediction. So um, Schrodinger's wave equation made allowances for the fact that the electron is moving around very rapidly and uh, it made allowances for regions of probability rather than a rigid um, planetary-like orbit around the nucleus. The solutions to Schrodinger's wave equation generate four numbers for each electron in an atom. And no two electrons within the same atom may have the same four quantum numbers. Four letters are used to represent these solutions to the wave equation. And those four uh, letters represent the four different numbers that are, are assigned to each electron in the, uh, in, the, in the atom. The first letter, N, is the principal quantum number, and it denotes the size of the orbital. And it can be any integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. L is the azimuthal quantum number and defines the shape of the orbital. Um, the orbital. So they define different shapes. Um, mathematical equations, for example, can define the shape of a curve like a parabola or a hyperbola. In the case of electrons, um, they are very often either spherical or lemniscate in shape. They look like figure eights. But they're not flat figure eights, they're three-dimensional figure eights. So they're three um, Three variables have to be described when you describe a lemniscate that is three-dimensional, so it creates a dumbbell shape. The values for L can be anything less than or equal to n minus 1. So if n is equal to 2, the principal quantum number is 2, L can be 1, um, uh, 1 or 2, or 0. The magnetic quantum number, m sub L, defines the orientation of the orbital. They found early on when they were doing spectroscopic analysis of elements that were, that were excited, that when they exposed the elements to a magnetic field while it was being excited, that it split the spectral lines. And this splitting of the spectral lines had to have an explanation. And the explanation they finally discovered was due to the fact that the, the orbitals were arranged in three different um, planes. In, case, in the case of p orbitals, as you see later on, you could have a PX, a PY, or a PZ, a PZ orbital, and depending on how it is oriented in space, it'll interact uh, differently with the magnetic field, differently enough so that it'll, it'll create a slight energy difference in the emission lines. M sub S is the magnetic spin quantum number, which means, um, and I've drawn a little picture here of an electron spinning, of course, that assumes that the electron is a particle. But it's hard, to, it's hard to describe things like that in, in uh, quantum chemistry. But if you were to picture an electron as a particle, you, would have, you could have one spinning clockwise, or you could have it spinning anticlockwise. And when charged particles spin, they generate a magnetic field. Those magnetic fields can interact. When two magnetic fields interact, like two magnets, for example, if you put north pole to north pole, the, magnet, the magnets will repel. But if you flip the magnets, they will attract. In the case of two negatively charged particles, they will electrostatically repel. But the fact that their magnetic fields can be oriented uh, spin up or spin down allows for a diminishment of the, repulsion, the repulsive forces between the two electrons. So when any two electrons are forced into the same orbital, they will have to spin pair to reduce the repulsion so that they can occupy the same orbital. And that's what this m sub s can mean. Uh, it means it's either the number is plus one half or negative one half. Simply a, a, an answer to the solution of the Schrodinger wave equation. And it represents the spin pairing of those electrons. Now, any energy level within an atom can contain two to the n squared electrons. So if the principal quantum number is equal to one, then that level can contain two electrons. If the principal quantum number is two, 
you can put up to eight electrons into the level. If the principal quantum number is three, you can get up to 18 electrons and so on. The number of sublevels for each quantum number is equal to n. Therefore, if n equals one, you can get L equals zero. And of course, when L equals zero, the orbital is called an S orbital. If n equals two, L can be one or zero. And when n equals one, the orbital is a p orbital. So when you have n equals two, you're also able, you're also able to have an S orbital. Uh, if n equals three, the value of L can be two, one, or zero. And when L equals two, it's a d orbital. And uh, when the principal quantum number is three, you can have s, p, and d orbitals in that level. If the principal quantum number is four, the values of the principal values of L are three, two, one, and zero. And when L equals three, the orbital is an f orbital. And when the principal quantum number is four, you can also have all these other orbitals in there. Theoretically, g, h, and i orbitals are possible, but not needed because no atoms have that many electrons. It's also important to point out that 3d and 4s orbitals um, overlap. They have about the same amount of energy. And same with 5s, 5d, and 5s, 4d, and 4s levels have approximately the same energy level. And that's why you sometimes see when you're writing electron configurations that uh, the levels that you thought were going to fill don't fill, but some other level fills before it. That's because the energy levels are very close together. And depending on the atom, can be actually switched place. M sub L is used to distinguish orbitals, as I mentioned earlier, that are aligned differently and thus feel the effects of the magnetic field differently. This is called the Zeeman effect that the, I mentioned earlier, where uh, an excited gas is placed in a magnetic field and its spectral lines split according to how the atoms sense the presence of the magnetic field. And that was explained eventually by the fact that Px, Py, and Pz orbitals are, are oriented on different planes in the three-dimensional uh, coordinate plane.